What is up everyone, my name is Al from Games Rip, and today we are talking about Sonic Hellfire Saga. That's right, this Sonic free mod, standalone by the way, is available to play on your Sega Mega Drive. That's right, it is fully here, and it has taken like five years to actually produce, but let me tell you, once you see this, you're going to want to play this, do it. So this is it by Red Miso Studios. That's right, it started off as a just a Sonic free mod, and now we've got this hellish, hellish standalone title available on Sega Dreamcast and Sega Genesis. This is quite graphic for a Sonic game. Yes, that's right, this really is plunging you into the depths of hell as Sonic. Yes, you probably wouldn't think you'd ever see this, but this, to me, makes it one of the best and most compelling Sonic games I've played in years. Don't get me wrong, Sonic Mania and the kind of recreation of Sonic Triple Trouble, they're great, but this is something different. And the fact I'm a horror fan, as well as a Sonic fan, this is what I've finally been waiting for. So let's take a quick look at the options. By the way, love the graphics here. So yes, it does give you an emoji, obviously easy, hard, maniac, whatever. If I was you, I would go assist. Obviously you can turn on off flashing, because obviously the, those of you out there who do suffer from photosensitivity, then obviously there is that option there as well. But otherwise, everyone else do keep it on because there's a lot of flashing and it kind of actually makes sense. It does also warn you here that there is health regeneration and boss HP reduction. Basically, meaning it just makes that game a little bit easier should you turn it on, as it says once you've read it. I would advise for the first time, please, for the love of God, turn it on because this game really is rock hard. So yes, for the first few levels, you're kind of plunged into this kind of, let's say, ghosts and goblins? Ghouls and ghosts kind of inspired looking area, maybe even Castlevania. Now the reason I'm saying this is because this game is actually heavily influenced by Castlevania, Ghouls and Ghosts, Splatterhouse, Demon Crest, you name it. There's likely going to be a sprite that either comes from it or is very similar or heavily influenced by it. Now for me that's great like I said earlier because I love the horror franchise types games anyway but yes you cannot deny it's clearly got that vibe and it is awesome. Now yes the game will throw you into a boss fight or a mini boss fight quite quickly which is great there's a lot of them and you can clearly see right now right where this one is clearly inspired from Super Ghouls and Ghosts Ghosts and Goblins, yeah, you, you know who that character is, right? And like I said, they will be popping up absolutely everywhere throughout this game. This really is kind of... It's a Sonic game, but it almost feels like a love letter to the old school arcade kind of Capcom kind of titles, if that makes any sense. It certainly feels like it anyway. The other thing that this game really does have is it actually feels like it has some narrative to the point where it's actually giving you a story. Sonic is literally questioning where he is. He doesn't know where he is until obviously the hellish characters start to turn up. And yes, it certainly starts to get real and a lot harder from there. Now for me, one of the real kind of things with this 
is this is a really hard game. This is not easy. You're going to find yourself dying a hell of a lot. I really do have to say though, the sprite work for this is quite incredible. Now, I don't know if all the sprites actually came from Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles. I'm not entirely sure. I'm actually pretty sure that's not the case. I could, I, again, I could be wrong. But actually, visually, this game really is an example of how I think most Sonic players really... This is what we gravitate towards. We gravitate towards that 16-bit look. Don't get me wrong, games like, you know, Sonic Adventures, Sonic Frontiers, etc. They're good, but they're not this, are they? Another point is the music for me is fantastic. That soundtrack is absolutely banging to the point where you could have an album of that music on its own. I mean, just as an example, just listen to this banging soundtrack. As well as the actual soundtrack itself, even the sound effects are pretty much on point, which really does give this this audio ecstasy feel, if that makes sense. It really feels like this has been thought about massively. Now, I believe actually some of the tracks are even heavily inspired by all of these other titles I mentioned before. That's right, heavily inspired by, maybe it feels like slightly borrowed from? I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but at the end of the day, it's doing exactly what it should. It's setting the tone for this, and it is great. Now, yes, you will find that the bosses do start hard, but they do increase in difficulty pretty damn quickly. Now, don't get me wrong, most of it really will come down to memorization. That really is all it will take. But for me, it's the creativity of these bosses, these these boss stages because they are all different they are all unique yes like i said they are kind of borrowing bits from other games but for me that's that's not a downside that just shows how original and creative these games originally were but to throw it in the mix with sonic that surely is is crazy right and like i said there's mini bosses and main bosses obviously the end boss yeah you can probably guess who it's going to be right but in a maybe a slightly different form than you would expect. But yes, I think these boss fights really do add a a nice breakup into the gameplay. It doesn't feel like they're just put there for the hell of it. They actually feel like they are to actually kind of pace out the game, but in a good way. And it actually feels like they add something to each level. Because a lot of the time when you do play these games and they have boss fights, it's kind of like, okay, end of three levels chucking a few bosses where disease actually kind of like i said because you've got mini bosses as well that adds to it and the bosses actually kind of add something to the level in the sense of design they actually kind of match up to what is you know the background and kind of what's going on it just it works it makes sense and the music with it also again it's all just great say well is that actually a downside to this game if i'm really brutally honest the only downside is it does feel like the game is just a that just a tad bit too punishing don't get me wrong it really is rinse and repeat and you will get it it just feels like the easy difficulty it, it, it's not easy, but although they're not really calling it easy, they're calling it assist, so I do get that, but yeah, maybe just a little bit too punishing. One thing I did actually forget to even mention was the fact 
you're collecting rings to use as health. That again is great ingenuity. We've never seen that before in Sonic, or certainly to my recollection in any of the 16-bit platformers, which I think is great because you're not just collecting rings for the sake of getting rings to get lives. It actually feels like you're doing it to literally save your life. So anyway, I hope you've liked this nice little look at Sonic Hellfire Saga for the Dreamcast slash Genesis. I love it. I love seeing these mods. Like I said, there's tons and tons out there and it's just getting better and better. When, and, you know, you can clearly tell this has been in production for literally like five years. So I'll say drop a comment on what you think here. Are there any mods you want me to check out or Sonic titles? Let me know. Drop a comment. Like, comment and subscribe. That's how Sonny out.